Hey everyone, what is good? Welcome back to the channel. This is Silver Hyena, and for today's video, what I have planned. Oh, geez, the pipes in this place. Oh, they they get noisy. Anyways, um, yes, yes, that's right. What I have planned for today. I am going to be testing out the Master's Touch watercolor art set. Now then, Hobby Lobby has a whole bunch of these different art sets. Everything from just sketching, there's this little watercolor one, there's one for acrylics, one for oils. They've got some for everything and some are nice and tiny like this, nice and compact, and others are like <laughs> way too big. However, I figured uh, 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 I think it's better to smart, eh, better to smart small, <laughs> oh, uh, bleh. better to start small and work our way up, but there's nothing wrong with being smart either. <laughs> Anyways, let's crack this puppy open and see what all we get. Alrighty, so regularly this little kit is... $16.99, might as well just be $17. However, as I have stated many times before on this channel, Hobby Lobby has, like often, their Master's Touch and Fine Touch go on sale for half price a lot. So, I paid around $8.09 nine if you include tax. So, I think I got quite a bargain. Anyways, we have 12 watercolor pancakes. Okay, that's how it's worded, it, but it's like, once I said it out loud, I was thinking, you know, pancakes. Um, moving on, one palette, two brushes, one charcoal stick, one eraser, one sharpener, one sponge, and one tin carrying case. Obviously, gosh, I hope so. Anyways, let's take off the plastic. So really, it's like this kit, you get quite a bit in here, and the, the case, it's its nice and lightweight. I'm trying to get it open without knocking my water over. Ah, there we are. Okay, it, it looks really nice overall. Okay, well, like the plastic and... Here it is. It, it does feel kind of cheap. Oh, and that sponge. That is it's kind of a hard, crunchy <laughs> sponge. <laughs> yeah, it's like you don't really want something like that to be crunchy. I don't know why I felt the need to flip it over. I just did. And oh, this, this sharpener. Oh my gosh. That is so tiny and petite. It is so cute. we have a nice eraser. I swear you can never have too many of these. If you can ever get them open. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Maybe. Ha. Huh. So there. After a battle of epic proportion that lasted way too long, freed the eraser. And... So instead of a pencil, they gave us a whole charcoal stick. Now then I am curious as to how exactly this is going to work out. Charcoal is one of those mediums that it's like, I know it's one of the most popular artistic mediums. However, there was a time when I was younger that I did not like working with charcoal. It has been so long since I began working with it has been so, uh, not began working, but uh, words are hard today. <laughs> Basically, I've not worked with charcoal in a while. I think I might have done a little bit of swatching when I did some old art supply haul sorts of videos. That's it. So this is going to be interesting. And I didn't really think of using charcoal with watercolors, but guess what? We are today. And then here we've got the flat brush. I've seen worse. 
and we have the little round brush. So of course, first things first, we gotta swatch these out. However, the added challenge to myself is that barring the paper, of course, because no paper came in the kit, I am going to only use what came in the kit, which means my friend here. I'm sorry, my friend, but this must be done for the sake of likes, subscribes, and views. Yay! Alrighty, now that that is out of the way, we gotta get these swatches done. So, eh, hang on. Alrighty, so we've got the swatches, and I kind of went through this quickly just because technically I feel like I've already swatched these before because I have done the Master's Touch watercolor paints before. Granted, they were a little bit different than this. It was actually one of my earliest videos that I ever posted to this channel, so if you're curious, I will have one of those little eye bubbles and a link in the description below for that one if you want to go back and look at it. Anyways, I have to say that for inexpensive watercolors, these don't look half bad. However, before we carry on, I wanted to see how well color would lift once it is dry. So I'm going to re-wet it and try to lift the color, see how well that works. And the other thing I wanted to do was to add wet paint onto one of these swatches and see how well it'll it'll re-wet and blend together. So let's get to that. Okay, well as you can see, there is a little bit of color lift. I mean, like some of the color is obviously on the tissue however on the page it doesn't really look like it lifted all that well so i'm gonna say color lifting once the paint is dry big fat fail but Now then, the wet on dry blending, while it's not flawless, I definitely say it works. I mean, like, it's not the smoothest blend, but as you can see, it does work. All right, so next up, what I wanna test, oh my God, this is so light. And boy, are my fingers going to be a mess after using that and my whole hand. What I wanted to do here, test out the charcoal so I can get some decent lines, decently thin lines, but they gave us an eraser. I want to see how well this stuff erases. Okay, don't do that. <laughs> so it erases. But in order to get rid of eraser crumbs, okay, let me try my, my friend here. Okay, that makes a little bit less of a mess, but I have something else that I've been sitting on for a while. 
that now may be a perfect time to try out. This is a makeup brush. However, I did not get it to powder my face. No, 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 no. What this is for? Eraser crumbs. Like, I have been... Oh, hang on, let me put this down a sec. I've been using this thing for several years now, and I love it to bits. However, I've also seen some people recommend getting a makeup brush to get rid of crumbs on the, uh, the eraser crumbs. Especially if you're using something like charcoal or really, really soft graphite. So, oh. I'll clean this off and see if it works better on colored pencil or something else because that was a big fat oof. Moving on. All right, now I just need to determine what it is I want to use as today's subject, and then we'll get to the painting part. Okay, so leave it to me to not only use an unfamiliar medium, but also think it's a good idea to draw a human with it, with minimal use of the eraser. But I'm guessing that's just why at least some of you wonderful viewers watch the channel. To watch me struggle and suffer of my own accord. Anyways, I recently re-watched the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies, the remakes. Yes, I know the original is a classic, but I actually like the remakes better. However, I still enjoyed the bad and I mean really bad movies in this franchise. I mean, I, I enjoy I enjoy all the movies in the franchise, but I just love me some Thomas Hewitt Leatherface. So yeah, video in the process of being filmed, sudden splash of inspiration, and here we are. However, I must say that after using this little charcoal stick, I'm curious to try out drawing a whole charcoal piece. While it was a risk, I haven't done any horror-themed art in a while, and I do love me some slashy stabby guys. Alright, now then, I really, really, I really, really wish I'd have done this in pencil. Because I'm not really so sure. I, I like the charcoal. I might need to do another separate drawing with ch just charcoal at some point. However, I'm not sure how well this is going to work exactly, but I said I would not use anything. Oh my god. I was using this eraser. <laughs> Forgive me. Um, okay, well, let's just, um, erase that, um, <laughs> oh my gosh, I totally spaced out, I'm so sorry, please forgive me, viewers, oh my gosh, did I use it during the whole sketch, do I have to do the sketch over again, have mercy on me, please, okay, I know I was naughty, but I was still only using this sharpener, like, I'm not exactly sure, like, I mean, if they were gonna go the charcoal route, maybe a charcoal pencil. Anyways, um, I can gripe about that later. So part of what I wanted to do here was all these colors are like super bright and cheerful. And so I thought that, like, you know, because I'm not challenged here enough already, let's do something more horror themed and let's see if we can dull down these bright colors. Yeah, because that oh boy I'm gonna regret this <laughs> I miss my thin fine lines however probably once okay I, got, I gotta stop once I'm done with the paint I'll probably sharpen this up to a finer point and redo the line art this thing it is so lightweight this is not and it makes your hand a mess. 
Yeah, I'm just kind of a, a mess here right now, like messier than this charcoal paper, so I'm just gonna jump on into the paint. Well, not literally jump into it. You know what I mean. So, because I obviously wasn't challenging myself enough already, the next test to determine how versatile these colors could be. While I usually revel in the use of nice, bright colors, like what this set provides, I decided that I needed to dull down and mute the colors. And I'll say that they dulled down quite well. Also, the charcoal. While an unusual choice to put in the watercolor kit, it actually worked out surprisingly well. At least for this piece. Now, the charcoal does leave a bit of a muddy residue. However, given the gritty nature of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it worked in my favor. Slowly, I've been getting more comfortable with drawing humans, and at least half of his face is covered. <laughs> However, I may try drawing this piece again just because I wasn't able to get the eyes as intense as I would have liked. But I really like this version of Leatherface. Thomas Hewitt, and this is also my favorite mask design of his. Yeah, I think I mentioned this in another video, but it was shortly after beginning my time in the workforce that I turned a complete 180. You see, there was a time I was painfully squeamish. Gore in movies and TV could not handle. One I remember very clearly was that Indiana Jones Raiders of the Lost Ark cut to the present. Now I can watch The Walking Dead while eating breakfast. Heck! I even watched Texas Chainsaw Massacre the beginning right before bed! It's amazing how retail can warp your brain. <laughs> what is it about a giant, chainsaw-wielding cannibal hillbilly that's so intriguing? Regardless of which TCM timeline you're following, I swear it's been written and rewritten so many times that there isn't really a consistent, single streamlined timeline, at least that I can figure out. Not that that's something that keeps me up at night, mind you. Uh, anyways, regardless of whether it's Bubba Sawyer, Junior, Jed, Sawyer, or my boy Thomas Hewitt, one thing all of the Leatherfaces have in common is that in the family hierarchy, he's actually the lowest ranking taking his commands from the other members of his family. Furthermore, most of your classic slashers tend to be solitary. Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees, and Freddy Krueger to name a few. But Leatherface, whichever one, operates in a family unit. Extremely twisted and sick family unit, but a family unit nonetheless. You can tell by his body language that Leatherface is not only submissive to his family, but in many cases, endures abuse from them. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Drayton Sawyer. Wow. Way to make a guy who hacks up bodies with a chainsaw and wears the skin of those he slaughters seem somewhat sympathetic. But I personally think that's what makes him one of the most unique of the slashers. I mean, if this guy wanted to, he could pound the lot of his family into the ground, it wouldn't be much of a contest. Yet, he takes the abuse as well as the orders from those higher up in the family food chain. Am I reading too much into this? Probably. But it is these sorts of things that make the genre of horror so intriguing. What I think makes the rest of the respective families, Sawyers or Hewitts, take your pick, so terrifying is that they can blend in with regular society. A leather face is many things, a uh, subtle isn't one of them. However, other members of his family can mingle with people like us normies and lead the poor saps right into the lair of their trained attack dog. For me, I think it's Charlie slash Hoyt who really takes the cake. In many ways, this psycho even upstages Thomas Hewitt. Just vicious, calculating, and can pass as being a regular Joe Schmo until it's far too late to escape. But with all that being said, I just think that Thomas here needs a hug. 
And before you ask, yes, I am a bit of a nutty fangirl. I do love me some slashers. Oh yeah, you might have wanted to hear me talk a bit more about these paints, too. Um, <laughs> well, I have to say that during the, the entire course of working on this piece, I just enjoyed them. Like, like just sheer enjoyment is one of the... That, that's Right now, that's all I can really think of to describe them, because they were really good considering how inexpensive and easily accessible they are. That's a good combination. The colors that come in this set offer a wide range of versatility and mixing, so you've got good options with the colors, I mean, and as you can see, it's like I took a bunch of bright, cheerful, happy colors and muted them down, and I was very proud of coming up with skin tones as well. I mean, like, for me, that's, that's massive. I mean, like, I deserve a like for that alone. I do feel as though I have technically already reviewed these paints before, and I will have a link to that video in the description below so that you can check that one out next. Because while it was Master's Touch Paint, which was like my first watercolor video I ever did on this channel, it was a different set, but it was still the little, the, the, I want to say pancakes again, but yeah, I'm just going to say it again. The little watercolor pancakes. There. I said it. Seriously, props to Master's Touch on this little set. This is a gem and a half. Alrighty, and here we are. Finally done. I have to say that Overall, I am very pleased with these paints. I mean, like, while they may be cheap, they are certainly usable. I like them. All right, so the set as a whole, overall, this is a very, very nice set, especially if you get it while it's on sale. Oh, I realize I never did use the sponge, but I don't think I needed it because I got my water cups, which to be fair, water cups are something that you kind of need to work with with watercolor, so there's that. Anyways, the one major thing about this set that I would change, come on, come on, instead of the charcoal stick, I would have a regular pencil. That's really the only change I would make. It's like the paint brushes, well, these aren't the Greatest, what is that, what, what is that? What is that? Oh, it's attached to the brush, whatever it is. Eh, hang on. Okay, where was I? Oh yes. These brushes, while not the greatest brushes in the world, they still work in a pinch. So they aren't half bad, while hardly the greatest. They're, they're, oh, there I go turning off my light again. But the brushes, they're all right overall. And of course, nice soft eraser. I actually like this eraser. And of course, well, it would be nice to have a little bit more mixing space. As you can see, I didn't use all of these. And I often altered colors. It's like once I was done with, say, like the green, I mixed it up again and used it on the, on the mask. And, then like it just kind of went on and on and on and then I would change back <laughs> but while I would like like probably like you know have some external palettes but if this is all you got it'll work oh boy did I make a mess and the other thing of course was testing out making like all of these really really bright colors and I'm actually proud that I came out with something kind of dull and muted. <laughs> so, <laughs> make of that what you will. If I had to give this a numerical rating, I would say a solid 7 out of 10 would be fair. Does it have its problems? Yeah, I mean like as you can see the paint as it's drying it's getting a little bit separated and odd, but I mean like it's, it's cheap paint, what do you expect? 
but it is usable. I know I keep saying that, but I can't stress that enough. It is usable. So something like this, if you're uh, just beginning on getting into painting or art, whatever, and if you've been kind of leery about the high prices of watercolors, like the good professional stuff, consider picking up this to play around and try it out. So that way you can have the fun and enjoyment of watercolor without having to get a second mortgage on your house. So overall, this little watercolor kit, I would recommend it. Anyways, with that being said, that's all the time we have for today's video. If you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Post in the comments, who is your favorite horror movie slasher? Well, yeah, Jason Voorhees is my main man. I've got a soft spot for Thomas Hewitt as well. And with that being said, this is Silver Hyena signing off. Stay creative, everybody. Bye!